Now, after completing explanation of Sri Dhamrastakam, Srila Gurudev is beginning his explanation of Srila Bhakti No Thakur's Bhajan Rahasya. Srila Bhakti No Thakur is extremely merciful. Why? Because all the instructions which are relevant for devotees in a very low stage, at the very beginning of their spiritual life, in the middle and at the end, all the instructions relevant to the devotees at the very high stage of their spiritual life. He has collected them all together and put them in sequence in his unprecedented grantha, Sri Bhajan Rahasya. You know that Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, he has given in a sutra form only briefly, the description of Astakalya Lila, the eternal pastimes of Radha Krishna, which go on throughout eight portions of the day, 24 hours of the day, all day and night. So after that, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, in his Govinda Lila Mrita, expanded on the basis of those sutras, and he elaborately described Astakalya Lila. Later, Srila Vishnu Thakur, in his Sri Krishna Bhavana Mrita, he elaborated even further on this very confidential and elevated subject matter. So, the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, eternal pastimes, which take place in the, from 24 hours a day, these pastimes are divided into eight sections. They are called eight yams or eight kal, eight times of the day. Three of these sections occur during the day, three of these sections occur during the night, and there's one section at dawn and one at dusk. Makes eight portions of the day. So, some people may have the idea that, oh, all should just take shelter of Radha Kund and do bhajan there and remember Astakarya Lila. But this is artificial. Why? Because persons who are qualified for this kind of sadhan, they are extremely rare. And all the various devotees in the devotional community are at different stages and have different requirements in their spiritual life. Everyone cannot attain that stage at once, high stage at once. And therefore, it's very important to understand the stages which will gradually lead one to, to successfully arrive at the stage of being absorbed in those very confidential pastimes that have been explained by Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Kamaraj Goswami and Sri Vishnu Chakri Thakur. So, Sri Rupa Goswami Pad explained the stages Adosadha, beginning with faith, Sadhu Sangha, beginning to, to take shelter of the angas of bhakti, bhajana kriya, then the clearance of unwanted desire and misconception, anatta and vritti, then steadiness comes, steadiness of mind, concentration, after that, ruchi, taste, then attachments, and then bhav. In the stage of bhav, one can naturally be absorbed in astakalya lila. So, if one will go through these stages step by step, then only then will he have the opportunity to be able to touch that eternal transcendental Astakali Lila of Radha and Krishna. If artificially one will try to imagine Astakali Lila 
and that one is serving in those pastimes and one who artificially imitates Pancha Dasha, the five stages of the advanced devotee, Shravandasha, Barandasha, Smarandasha, Apandasha and Sampanti Dasha, then what will happen? His intelligence will become bewildered and he will slowly, slowly and surely fall down and become attached to the material world even more. Therefore, it is very essential that one should follow this Bhajan Padati which has been uh, presented by Srila Bhakti no Thakur. This Bhajan Padati of Srila Bhakti no Thakur, Bhajan Rahasya, is the elaborate explanation of Gauravani, the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself personally gave in Sri Shikshastakam. So each, of, each yam of Bhajan Rahasya corresponds to one of the eight verses of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Shikshastakam. So in the beginning of Shikshastakam it is stated, Chaito Darpana Marjanam. First of all, the Chitta which is composed of so many sanskars from this life and previous lives which is contaminated by the modes of nature this contamination, these mundane sanskars these are the dust on the mirror, they have to be cleansed away if first Cheto Dharpana Marjanam will not take place then how will he be able to remember the Aprakrita the supernatural pastimes of Radha Krishna which are beyond the influence of this material world so, first Chaito Dharpana Marjana must take place. Srila Bhakti no Thakur is very merciful. Why? Because he has explained all of these things. So slowly but surely, the living entities can have the chance to attain the ultimate goal of life. So the first chapter describes Pratamyam, Southern. So in Pratamyam, the first portion of the day is called Nishanta. And those devotees who attain rati or bhav naturally, spontaneously, they can meditate on the Nishanta Leela of Radha and Krishna. Their pastimes which occur at the end of the night, 3.36 to 6 o'clock. So these pastimes are very, very heartwarming, very, very pleasing. At that time, Brinda Devi, she teaches the birds, cuckoo birds, and other birds to begin to sing all together very very sweetly to awaken Radha and Krishna who are sleeping together in a kunj. So gradually Radha and Krishna wake, are awakening but they don't open their eyes. They don't want to be separated from each other. So then the parrots come and they sing to Radha and Krishna to encourage them to return to their homes because the morning is about to come. But still they won't go. Then the cockerel crows but still they won't go. Finally, one old monkey, Kakati, she gives a warning that Jutila may be coming. So then... Oh, coming? Yes, coming. Mm. Jutila is coming. Down the door. Just now. <laughs> the door. So, at that time, then all become afraid and quickly return to their homes. So, before they can return to their homes, they have to be prepared. So, when they are eager to go, Rupa Manjari first, followed by Rati Manjari and other Manjaris, they'll enter into the Kunj and they'll render their services which are appropriate at that time, such as cleansing and decorating Radha Krishna, doing their Sringar before they return. So, and then after that, after Rupa Manjari and, other, and her party have rendered these services to Radha and Krishna, then the Lita and Vishaka, the Sakis, the peers of Radhika, they can enter. So, these pastimes are very beautiful and pleasing to the heart. But those who are Anadikari, those who are not qualified to meditate upon these pastimes, they should not touch these things. They should not try to touch. It's very dangerous. Why? Because as soon as they touch, then it will awaken their material sanskars and they'll begin to remember all their own experiences in the material world. So this will be unfavorable for their progress in spiritual life. Therefore, if one cannot remember the Nishanta Leela, then at once one should come to Nishanta Bhajan. As Srila Bhakti Nautako has explained, what is the meaning of Nishanta Bhajan? It means 
Mm-hmm. Nishanta. Nishanta means Radha Krishna's pastimes at the end of night. But for those not qualified, Nishanta Bhajan, the end of the night, that means the darkness of their uh, journey in this material world in many lifetimes is about to come to an end. What is the sign? They develop Shraddha. The living entity develops faith. This faith comes... What is in Nisha? Mm. What is Nisha? Nisha, general meaning of Nisha is night time. And Generally cont- people are sleeping in bhajan. Mm-hmm. Ignorance is Nisha. Nisha means night time and Anta means end. So Radha Krishna's pastimes, they are at the end of night, Nishanta Leela. But for the living entities, they are sleeping in Maya, <coughs> they are not practicing devotional service. So Nisha Anta means the end of their ignorance of devotional service and their constitutional position in relationship with Sri Krishna. So, what is the sign of Nishanta, the end of the, the ignorance? The Shraddha, faith is awakened in the heart. It comes by Sadhu Sangha, the association of pure devotees. Hmm? What is the Shraddha? By the association of pure devotees, a person comes to understand that in this world, if I am wealthy, if I am beautiful, if I am healthy, if I have power and position, popularity, the love and affection of people in this world, family members, all of these things. By attaining all of these things, I cannot be happy. There is only suffering in this world. And therefore, if I want to be happy forever, it is essential that I engage in the practice of devotional service. Hmm? And one who has Shraddha, external symptom, he will be Shanagat. He will be unconditionally surrendered at the lotus feet of Sadguru and Shuddha Vaishnavas. So this mm, faith, it has its internal and external symptoms. So the internal, and, uh, sorry, the Bhakti Lata Beach, the seed of devotion has its internal external symptoms. So the, the Swarup or the constitutional internal nature of Bhakti Lata Beach, the seed of devotion, is Krishna Seva Basana, the desire to serve Krishna. And its outer symptom is complete conviction in the instructions given by Krishna in, Sh- in Shastra. Complete faith, complete conviction in the words of Hari, Guru, Vaishnav, Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Therefore, it is some definitions have been given in Shastra in Amnai Sutra, Srila Bhakti Thakur has written, Shraddha Tananyo Varjam Bhaktun Muki Chitta Briti Vishesh. Shraddha means the special disposition of the heart which remains forever inclined towards acts of service to Krishna, completely neglecting all other processes and all other activities including karma, fruitive activity, jnana, the cultivation of philosophical knowledge in order to attain uh, liberation from this world and yoga, the development of mm, mm, the practice of yoga to develop mystic siddhi. When all other types of sadhana are being completely neglected and one's heart is specially inclined only to acts of service, this is called sad- sadha, faith. So this is actually the description of Krishna Seva Basana, the internal symptom of the Bhakti Lata Beach. An outer symptom in Sri Chaitanya is stated. Shada Shabde Vishwas Kahe Suridanishai Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Kama Kritahe. When a person has the unflinching conviction that simply by performing bhakti my life will be successful. Hmm? There's only only one only needs to serve the lotus feet of Krishna under the guidance of Guru. And by doing this, all my responsibilities in this world are automatically fulfilled and therefore I have no other responsibility except for to do bhajan than this conviction, which is unwavering, is called Shraddha. Hmm. So, this is the outer symptom of the presence of Bhakti Lata Beach. These are the symptoms of Paramatic Shraddha, transcendental faith, not worldly conviction. And this Paramatic Shraddha or Transcendental Faith also has two types. First type, Shashan Mahi Shraddha or Shastra Artha Avadharni Mahi Shraddha. The 
faith which is based, which is inspired by adherence to the rules and regulations given in scripture, which give one a discipline. If you don't do bhajan, you will have to suffer. So this is, this shashan mai shadha, shastra ata avadani mai shadha, is the uh, eligibility to enter into Vaidhi Bhakti. The other type of shast, uh, Shraddha, faith, is called Lobamai Shraddha or Bhagavat Lila Madhurya Lobamai Shraddha. The faith which is based on, hmm, the, which is inspired by the sweetness, hearing the sweetness of the services rendered by the associates of Krishna in his very sweet and beautiful pastimes. If one wants to serve like them, this is called Lobamai Shraddha. Now, what type of faith will awaken in the heart of the living entity? It will depend on sanskar, their impressions from their previous lives association and previous lives practice. There are many persons who come into Sadhu Sangha and they sit down and they listen and they have Sadhu Sangha for 50 years. But even after 50 years, they haven't really been listening, they've not been paying attention, otherwise they were listening but they're not following. Hmm? They are not observing the teachings which are given by the sadhu and therefore after many many years of association with the sadhu uh, they have not made any progress. They have not become transformed <coughs> and become like that sadhu. On the other hand, it may be that someone comes into sadhu sangha and there and then in only a few days hmm, they become transformed and they are following completely. Why? Depends on previous sanskars. So, Srila Gurudev finally commented, but he translated into English, that he sees many so-called who are wearing red cloth and brahmacharis and in renounced order. Uh, they are coming very, very late, they are not taking part in kirtan, and they think that these things are not important, only what Gurudev says is important. So we should try to follow all yam and niyam, to be under Gurudev's guidance, and attend all the um, practices which are part of our Dhammada Brat, Urja Brat, Kartik Brat, under Gurudev's guidance. Hare, hare.
Kadu. So Madhu Baba was very happy and he took his items from Krishna and went to play Hira. In the meantime, just before this, Kansa Maharaj was in Mathura. Kansa Maharaj was very worried. Why? He sent many demons. Putana, Trinavarta, Shakata, Shiva. And they all came to Vrindavan. But they never came back again. They never even sent any news what happened. So he called one of his very close intimate demons. And he said, Okay, see, I want you to go to Vrindavan. And you should kill Krishna. Keshi said, how will I recognize him? Kansamara said, it's very easy. He wears a peacock feather, pitava, and plays a bottle of flutes. So then, Keshi Daitya, he came here to Vrindavan. And when he came, he saw that there was one boy. But he wasn't uh, like Shamasundar. He was somewhat fat. But anyway, he had a peacock feather, flute, and pitamba. So this must be Krishna. So then Geshi came up to, to kill him. And he turned around, and with his back legs, he tried to kick him and kill him. He's so big and strong. He has clouds hovering above his head. He's so as big as a mountain. And he makes the earth tremble when he moves. So he came to Madhu Mangal, and with his back legs he went to kick him. But not by the touch of his back legs, only by the wind, only by the air, from the movement of his legs, Madhu Mangal went flying. <laughs> over and over he was rolling and fell into bushes. So then Keshi Dajjal, killing Krishna was very easy. This was a very easy thing. So now I should have some fun and make some disturbance. So he was very proud, he thought he had killed Krishna and he wanted to make a disturbance here in Brajamanda. Oh, this was his big mistake because at once Krishna came there and must be liberated him from his whole ego, from his identification with the material body. And so this place is called Keshigat, the place... Mahaprabhu at that time. So Mahaprabhu, he used to stay at the 
in the evening at Akur Ghat, where you have been. And in the daytime, we would go from there and we would chant Harinam, sitting beneath Imli Tala. And as he was doing Vandavan Parkrama, gradually he came to this place. Madhu Madhurasvita, Lodhita Tarubhitan, Anupama Bhava Vilasam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he would smile, his smile was so sweet. And upon seeing the beautiful smile of Mahaprabhu, you should all come and take darshan and see the beautiful smile of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then, Lodhita Tarubhita, he awakens greed. His beautiful smile awakens greed within the hearts of the living entities.
इसी तरह से पहले वो काम अजन में निष्ठा श्रवण कृष्ण स्मरण बर्तन पाप सेवन भर्तन बंधन का सत्कार
Ja, ja noch.
ये बिहार गुंड है ये बिहार घाट है ना एमली तला घाट ये कैसी घाट इस कितने घाट बने हुए हैं यहाँ ये सभी यहाँ पर राधा कृष्ण ने किया है जल कीड़ा जल के लिए हुआ है हमेशा उनके कीड़ा स्थल मिला Senior devotee preaching in the old world. Now, Kartik month on the bank of Jamuna, Binda Bandham Seva Kunja, and also Gopinath Bhaman. I offer my most respectful obeisances to my spiritual masters and to all the assembled Vaishnavas who are here in this most auspicious time and the most auspicious place. Srila Raimach has requested me to glorify my spiritual master. Of course, by the grace of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we were also introduced to many other so wonderful great souls. At a certain time in my life I was going through an incredible amount of despair. Then I heard one story from Srila Bhakti Rakak Srila Maharaj. He was quoting how Raghunathas Goswami had been broken-hearted in Jagannapuri after the departure of his Swarup Damodari spiritual master and Mahaprabhu himself so much that he was actually thinking of giving up his body. He didn't want to be in this world with us without his beloved guardians. But he made a decision that before that he wanted to see Govardhan. Apparently he hadn't been to Govardhan before that. He wanted to see Govardhan Radha Kunda. So he made the journey and came here to this holiest of all places. And here he met Vishnu Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatana Goswami. And in, he wrote, I met my Mahaprabhu and my Swami Damoda again. They were still living in Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. And then he got such a renewed enthusiasm in his spiritual service that he did what he did. Our Prayojana Acharya, Srila Raghunathas, Babaji Maharaj. So when I heard that story, I became very, very hopeful because in my small mind I had some other had felt the fear that after my Gurudev Srila Prabhupada had returned to his Nitya Lila, then maybe there would be no more hope of having any more guidance and any more good association to trust and all that. I think many of you present here shared these type of feelings in those same years. So, but by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, we could meet and get the association of so many of his beloved God brothers and friends who are so generous to help us to keep us somehow or other connected with the line of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Srila Bhakti Rakaksila used to tell us we have to do relief work we have to some or other give relief to those who are suffering from the separation of their spiritual master. Or whatever other reason may give suffering to them, but specifically in this regard of having 
gone through the departure of one spiritual guardian and being practically an orphan. In that moment you need so much relief. Plus, one is suffering from, from one's own immaturity, his own lack of understanding, and that makes you more helpless than anything else. So, this relief work, he, he emphasized so much, and this relief work is going on in, intensely, as I can also see here in this, in this wonderful assembly. This relief work of bringing people closer to Krishna, whatever it may take. When my spiritual master boldly ventured his mission into the western countries, he had full faith in the instruction. I just recently heard Prabhupada saying on one tape, I really didn't have much qualification of my own. The only thing which I can say about myself, which gives credit to myself, I have full faith in the words of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. I had full faith that I was about to do something on his behalf, to take his desire, his intense desire, that Krishna consciousness may, may conquer the whole world and reach the hearts of everyone in one way or another. Krishna is very tricky when it comes to preaching. I just heard from one devotee two days ago that the Chinese government paid him a ticket and paid him for singing the holy names of Krishna in many cities of China, plus in the radio and the television. And they were so pleased with his singing that they told him, you must promise every year you will come back. So surprising things by this Lord, who is standing at Wang Sivat, playing his flute, inviting the whole world, Veda Mata Gayatri, sending the messages out into the world, come to Vrindavan, come to Vansivat, come to the pure devotees, have association, don't stay there at home, don't waste your life away with all these mundane activities. So Prabhupada went and he conquered the world for Lord Chaitanya. He actually did that. And he constructed a royal road from Vrindavan, into almost every country of the world. And on that road he brought literature, musical instruments, sadhus, everything and anything you can imagine. And then he would take everybody back to Vrindavan. One time one, I was on one 747. You know, the biggest airplane. And it was packed, all with Vaishnavas. I'm sure some of you were on that plane. and. And in that, the devotees were dancing and dancing inside the airplane while it was flying and the stewardess was saying, please, not so high. Huh? <laughs> and then somebody asked Prabhupada, hey Prabhupada, why you spend so much money bringing all these people here to India? And Prabhupada looked at him and says, why do you eat every day? So he had a good answer for everything, that's for sure. <laughs> so then, Srila Prabhupada and his transcendental vision, it was extraordinary generous, that is without a question. And we are experiencing it, it just by the fact of remembering him and remembering what he did and how he accepted to live with us, how he accepted any type of condition to make everybody know that Lord Krishna and Sri Radhika, they are the supreme divine couple waiting generously, inviting themselves through the form of Chaitanya and Nityananda that the whole world may come here to Sringavat, Imlitala, Sevakunja to these most confidential places of divine pastimes, Radha Kunda, Govardhan. 
So, I don't know how in the world Prabhupada could actually make use, some use of quite a useless fellow. You know, he, everybody can make his own evaluation of himself and when I try to look upon myself impartially, I can only say definitely useless. But somehow the Prabhupada told us from the very beginning of coming in contact with him that we should just repeat his message. And somehow other I'm trying to do that and, and then some use appear, apparently appears. No credit of mine whatsoever. <laughs> but somehow other, Srila Prabhupada is utilizing us as his instruments. And afterwards, like now, where is Lord Chaitanya? Where is Lord Krishna? I didn't see them personally, I didn't talk to them, and so far they haven't talked to me. But I've seen Srila Prabhupada, he has talked to me. And when I go to the spiritual world by His grace, if I meet Him there, then all my longings are fulfilled. And He can introduce me to anybody else He, he likes to. But I just want to meet Him, and uh, I know He's there, because he was here, and he was so, I would say, mad about Krishna and mad about Lord Chaitanya, that even though at the advanced stage he would sing and dance in front of the Rasa Yatra cards, melting everybody's heart and making.